everybody who's ridden in a car in a subway, maybe you've taken a boat or a plane, you know pretty well that when the train or a plane or whatever it is is moving smoothly, you can't tell it's moving when you look outside. It may be that if it's a train that's rocking side to side, but that has nothing to do with forward motion, right? You don't really feel the forward motion. If it changes direction, or if it slows down or speeds up, then you feel it. But if it's moving constantly, you fall asleep, you wake up, you have no idea if you're moving or not. If you've been on a plane, you know you move hundreds of miles an hour and have absolutely no sensation of motion whatsoever. And in your frame of reference, the laws of physics will be the same. In other words, if you take, if you play a ping pong game on a train, the ball won't move differently than it usually moves. If the windows are open and there's wind rushing in, of course, it'll be effective. That would happen if it was stationary and it was wind coming in. Okay, the wind may be caused by your motion, but it doesn't matter. It's not the motion that's causing the change, it's the wind. If there was no air, if the windows were closed, it would wind. So it's not the motion. If you're in a plane, you're moving hundreds of miles an hour, or if you're in a fighter aircraft and it's thousands of miles an hour, it doesn't matter. You're not going to do any physics that's going to let you know that you're moving. There's no way that you can determine that you're moving unless you look outside. And if other things are moving with you, then you won't be able to tell. And you probably all have the experience where maybe you're on a train and you think that you're moving, and what happens is a train that started backwards. How many people have had that experience? A car and a train somewhere. A few of you have, okay? It's, it's a kind of vertigo. You're, you're sitting down and, and then you think you're moving, and what happens is there's another train going by the other side. And your eye knows already, your brain knows already that you're not going to feel motion, you're only going to see it. So you see something moving next to you and your brain tells you you're moving ahead, and then suddenly you realize you're not moving. It's kind of like a, a switch. Yeah, it's an interesting sensation. Now, it's not obvious that it has to be that the laws of physics are such that they wouldn't be affected by motion. Okay, I mean, the universe could have been different, and maybe you would have been affected by motion. All right, but as it turns out, the laws of nature are such that if you're moving uniformly, basically, you won't feel motion. All right? Anything that you do, any laws of physics that we discuss, will be true whether you're moving or you're standing still, as long as you're moving uniformly. You're not changing direction, you're not changing your speed, okay? Or as we learned with velocity, you're not changing your velocity. Right? Which means you're not changing either your speed or your direction or both. Now, in general relativity, you have a more advanced formulation of that law. Okay? But for our needs, basically, if you're moving to uniform motion, there's absolutely no way to determine it. How you're moving is called the frame of reference. And in physics, we always determine, we always describe things relative to your frame of reference. So if you say, well, I'm standing still, I don't feel any motion, I'm not moving, you say, well, okay, that's very nice, but where are you? you say, well, I'm on the train, uh, such and such. You say, well, uh, that train is moving from uh, New York to Washington. You say, well, I don't know, I don't feel any motion. In my frame of reference, nothing is moving. And let's say you see, ah, you know, I see, I see there's something moving. Um, somebody just threw a ball backwards. Let's say there's one person standing on the platform, all right? Another person is on a train and there's like a long window, all right? And somebody just threw a ball very quickly in the train backwards against the direction of the train. Let's say he threw, let's say the train is moving at 30 miles an hour and he threw the ball at 30 miles an hour backwards. From the frame of reference of the train, there's a ball moving like this at 30 miles an hour. train is moving 30 miles an hour, right, and the ball is moving 30 miles an hour in the train, then the total speed of the ball relative to the person standing outside the train is zero. Because the train is carrying it at 30 miles an hour, but the person threw it at 30 miles an hour. So until the ball falls at least, what's going to happen, what are you going to see? The train is moving this way, the ball is moving this way, and the train at exactly the same speed. So basically it's going to be hanging in the air relative to do you, do you see that intuitively? Okay. <laughs> if you did throw the ball, if you're holding the ball in your hand, you're going to see the ball of the person moving off at 30 miles an hour. When the person throws the ball, 
right? The ball's just going to be, you can see the train going by and the person threw the ball going by, and you're going to see the ball here. And as it falls, it's going to fall straight down. Okay, can you see that? Because it's moving at 30 miles an hour, and the train's moving at 30 miles an hour, so it's coming like that. So from your frame of reference, standing on the platform, as far as you're concerned, there's a ball falling straight down to the ground. Okay. Now, there's a principle, Galilean invariance and so on, that the laws of nature, as I said, don't depend on the speed which you're moving in its uniform speed. Now, we can deduce from that something interesting that we spoke about in the previous class. Now we can deduce from the principle of Galilean invariance something interesting that we spoke about in the previous class. And we might think that to start moving, you certainly need a force, that's our intuition. To stop moving, we might say, well, everything stops moving eventually, right? That's the way the ancient Greeks thought and everybody else thought. To stop moving, well, that's the natural state of events. Things stop moving by themselves. To start moving, it's clear that you need something to push. If I take a surface which has very little friction or no friction, a ping pong table with, with uh, grease on it, or I have a, an ice skating rink. There's an ice skating rink on the train, and there's an elephant on ice skates going that way. Okay? What happens? If he's moving with the speed of the train, he's not moving at all. Right. The elephant is moving at 30 miles an hour down the ice track in the train. You're looking through, the train is going by, right? the elephant handler is going by, the elephant is standing still as far as you're concerned, with the, with the ice underneath him flashing by. The elephant is standing still. Now, what happens if he slows down? You go from 30 miles an hour to, let's say, 29 miles an hour, right? As the train is going by, depending on how long the, the train is, okay? What's going to happen as far as you're concerned? Okay, can you all picture that? You have the elephant is moving at 30 miles an hour and the train is moving at 30 miles an hour. Now what happens if he slows down? You're going to see him going backwards. Right? The more he slows down, the more the train is going to start carrying him along. Do you see that? If he was standing still, he'd be carried along at 30 miles an hour. The other extreme is if he's going at 60 miles an hour, he's going sitting by you even if you're standing here. If he's going at 30 miles an hour, he's standing still. If he's going at 29 miles an hour, he's moving at how fast this way? One mile an hour. The train is pulling at 30 miles an hour this way. Every hour he's moving 29 miles this way. So every hour he's making one mile that way. Okay? So he's going by you at one mile an hour. Let's say you're standing on the platform and you see this elephant on, on ice skates and he's not moving. Okay, you don't even see, let's say, the ice skates, you just see an elephant in the big window. You don't even see the train. You're just looking through and you see this elephant right in front of you. Standing still. Okay. Now suddenly you see him start to move backwards. What would you say happened? If, if something is standing still and then it starts moving, what must have happened? The train moved past 
Okay, no. not, let's say, not the train specifically, but let's say in terms of what we so discussed so in the first class, I think it was, something is standing still, and it starts moving. What can you tell me? What must have happened? Something changed, force. obviously. What? Force. force. Something exerted a force on this to make it start moving. It wasn't true. Something made it move. Right? What I'm trying to show you is that intuitively, if we assume that the laws of nature are the same, even in the moving frame of reference, then for something to slow down without a force acting on it is just as impossible as for something to start moving without a force acting on it. Okay? We might think that to start moving, you certainly need a force. That's our intuition. To stop moving, we might say, well, everything stops moving eventually, right? That's the way the ancient Greeks thought and everybody else thought. Stop moving, well, that's the natural state of events. They stop moving by themselves. To start moving, it's clear that you need something to push. What this can show you is that they're both equally impossible if we accept that the laws of nature are the same in moving reference. To start moving and to stop moving both require a force. How do we see it? Because if this elephant is in the train, right, on the train we would say, well, maybe he could slow down by himself because that's the natural state of events, not friction. Things, you know, they're moving, stop. From the frame of reference outside the train, for him to start slowing down means that from our frame of reference, he's starting to move. Okay, if we accept that the laws of nature are the same, then it can't be that he started to move, and by the same token, it can't be that he started to slow down. Just like to start to move, he would have needed a force acting on him. In the same way, to start slowing down, he would need a force acting on him. So, given this law of nature that everything is the same, independent of the frame of reference, if it's linear motion, we can deduce that to slow down needs a force, as opposed to the original conception where you know, things just stop by themselves. Once we know that things slow down as a result of the force, we can investigate, well, what force is it? And we'll find out. There's friction, there's air resistance.